Hello friends, welcome to SQL with Manoj. So in this video, we'll talk more about identity property you can associate with the columns. So let's go first check what is exactly this identity property. So what is an identity property? It creates an identity column in a particular table. So with this identity property, you can create a column okay, in a table and that table can have only one column that you can set as an identity property, right? You cannot have more than one column with identity properties. Okay, this identity property is used for generating key values based on the current seed and increment, right? So with this identity property, you can have the column, okay, set as identity and by which you will get automated generated key values by SQL Server itself based upon the seed and the increment, right? So these two things, seed and increment are associated with identity property. You have to set the seed and you have to set the increment while making a column as entity, right? So let's say an employee table you have and there is an employee ID column that you make entity. So what is the idea behind that? Because you don't want the user to set the employee ID. You want SQL Server to set an identity and you want to make sure that, okay, these identity values are in sequence as when you are inserting employee records in that particular table. So let's say in an organization, the employee ID, they want to start from 100 and they want it to ever increasing. So the seed you will set as 100 and the increment you will set as one, right? Increment, you can even set anything, right? So the based upon the increment, the identity values will jump, right? And they will be incremented. Let's say if you set the increment as 10, right? So the identity values, those are generated will be 100, 110, 120, and so on and so forth, right? But we will not have any case with the employee IDs, maybe with some other uh, case or scenario, you might setting you might set the increment value as like that. But with our employee table, the scenario will have as the seed will be 100 and the increment will be one, right? The third point is each new value for a particular transaction is different from other concurrent transactions in a particular table. Okay, so this is just an uh, FYI. Okay, that um, whenever you are dealing with transactions, so let's say there are one or more transactions, and if all the transaction or more than one transaction are entering the values in a particular table. So those values may be different, okay, in different, different transactions, right? So let's go ahead and see how this identity property works, okay? I'll, I'll open SSMS, okay? And in our previous video, we saw an example of an employee table, okay? And this was the create table statement that was used to create the employee table. And these were the insert statements that were used to insert these three values. Okay. And this is the select statement that showed us, okay, what all records are present in this employee table. Okay. Having the employee ID as one, two, and three. Okay. So now let's say the organization thinks that, okay, the employee ID, you should not, the user should not provide. Okay. Uh, rather than SQL Server itself decide the employee ID to be. Okay. So here let's, uh, what I'll do is I'll delete this I'll delete this table, okay, or drop this table. Okay, so now we don't have any employee table and we'll try to make a new employee table with the uh, entity property, okay. So uh, before creating this employee table, I'll try to show you by the table designer, okay, the GUI tool, how can we create the table with entity property, okay. Uh, I'll just right click on the table new and select the table option. Okay, it will take us to table designer. Okay, here I'll set the column name as EMPLOYEID, data type as integer, and var care, let's say 100. Okay, for now I'll just have two columns. Okay, with I'll select the employee ID column, and in the below properties, there is a entity specification section, right? You have to expand it and you will see that it is no, right? So is identity property, you'll have to set as yes. Okay. And here the entity increment and seed by default is one, one, right? So we discussed that, you know, the identity seed will set as hundred. Okay. And the increment will keep it one only. Okay. So let's see what statement our table designer generated, right? I'll just click on generate change script. Okay. So I'll just take out the create table portion just like this. Okay. And I'll close everything because I didn't want the table to be created from here. Okay. And I'll paste the create table statement that was generated by SQL server engine here. Right. So here you can see create table, table name, employee ID, int not null, identity hundred comma one. Right. So this is the only difference in both of the create table statement. 
right so what i have to do is i just have to put this over here right so what i'll do is i'll type everything here identity and this hundred comma one okay i'll remove this so this is the syntax to create an identity column in a particular table you just have to specify identity the seed and the increment option here okay and your identity column will be created while creating this table okay so this table is created right so in the column explorer if you want to see the identity property it will not show you here but if you will try to you know script the table like create two statement right it will show it here it will show here right see identity hundred comma one okay everything is same integer and not null that you defined previously okay okay i'll close this okay so now our table is empty there are no records in this table okay let's see because there's a new created table okay how will we insert records so, so in our previous video we don't have this column as identity that's why the user were, were specifying this id by themselves and inserting the records okay now let's see if i still try to insert this right so let's go and execute it so this give me an error right it says that an explicit value for the identity column in the table employee can only be specified when a column list is used and identity insert is on okay so it says that the column list should be specified over here okay so i'll just try to copy all these columns so rather than typing all these columns what i can do is i can drag the column list over here okay i can enclose it in brackets right and as the employee id column is auto generated so i won't be selecting this employee id and i won't be setting this id column right and similar here i'll remove all these ids right and i'll copy the same thing over here okay so now here i'm just using the employee name i'm not inserting these values because these are null so i can skip these so what i can do is rather than you know having the employee id and other columns i can just keep my employee name over here right because i'm just inserting the employee name right okay so let's execute all of them right okay three records inserted let's see how those were inserted okay so you can see right the sql we didn't put 100 100 102 here sql server itself you know inserted these records with employee id 100 then 101 then 102 so all these are consecutive right okay so now let's say if somebody wants to explicitly insert a value here how can he do that right so there is a statement you can set that is set id e n t i t y identity insert and the table name okay then you have to put it on okay then you can insert explicit values over here okay and at the end what you'll have to do you'll have to set it to off okay by this you can enter explicit values in a particular table let's say you want to insert the employee id with thousand okay so you can do that by so let's say if you want to do it right now right by not enabling this option i'll just try to execute this right so i'll get an error it says that cannot insert explicit value for identity column in the table when identity insert is set off so what i'll do is i'll set the entity insert to on okay so let's do that i'll execute it okay it is on now what i'll do is i'll insert the record it is inserted and i'll set the in identity insert to off okay after doing that let's see how many records got inserted and what was the id see you can see the id was inserted was thousand okay now let's see if i try to insert the same record again right by using the automated id right i'll change the name j h o n john b right let's see what value will it get okay so i'll execute it and let's see what value it got it got 101 right because the id was because the latest current value was changed to thousand so the new value that was inserted was 101 so we saw the current behavior of this identity property that it resumes the next value with the current and the latest value present in the table column right so today in this video we are going to see how we can check and reseed identity value of a particular table column
okay so to check the identity value of a particular table there is a very simple statement that is dbcc check ident followed by the table name as the first parameter right so if you just execute this statement right you will get to know that the current identity value is 1001 and the current column value is 1001 okay so this is a very simple way to you know use it right now let's check how we can receive the identity value of a table right so why do we need to receive the identity value right what what would be the reason to receive it as you can see in this table the sample records here right we started with 100 101 102 and then we you know inserted 1000 and we saw that you know the next record that got inserted was 1001 so now let's say we want to resume after 102 we want the next record that is the sixth record to be set as 103 we want the employee id to be set as 103 so how we can do that so that can be done by receding the identity column value right and how we can do that we can just extend the dbcc check ident statement that we used above by using two more parameters that is second parameter is receipt and the third parameter is the receipt value right so to have the six record value as 103 we need to reseed it with 102 right so the current value of this table will become 102 instead of 1001 right so let's execute it so it has changed to 102 but although you know sql server does not show you the correct information on its current execution but if you again execute it it will show you that the current identity value has been changed to 102 okay now there is one more way to check it the previous statement that i sh show you that is dbcc check ident with the employee table okay if i execute it it shows that the current identity value is 102 and the current column value is 101 okay now let's insert one record right and let's execute it okay and let's check it okay so we see that you know the record inserted was 1002 not 103 why because the dbcc check ident statement with only the table name as the first parameter not only gives you the status of the entity value but it recedes the value with the largest value in the column right and we saw that you know the largest value is 1001 okay we received the value to 1002 it was receded successfully but when we ran this statement right it it receded back to 1001 from 102 right so whenever you are executing this statement right with only one parameter always be very very careful right so if you just want to check the identity value what is the current identity value always use the no receipt option or i would say don't use this statement at all right with just the table name always use the dbc check indent with the table name and with the options of either receipt or no receipt right so use so use receipt whenever you want to receipt the column value use no receipt when you don't want to receipt and you just want to retrieve the value right so let's go ahead and try to receipt it with 102 okay so this has been reset to 102 okay and now let's again go back and check with the no receipt option right so if i execute it it shows me that 102 okay let's again execute and check it it always shows me 102 as the current entity value right so with no receipt option it does not reseed right and with without this um, parameter this will always reseed so better not to use this option at all okay now let's insert the second record okay and let's check it so we can see that you know the next record that was inserted got 103 as a value right so okay so this is all about checking the current identity value and receiving the identity value and using the correct option while checking the identity value that is the no receipt option and in this video as a developer's perspective i'll be talking more about identity property although identity property uh, gives a lot of facility you know in generating sequence values but there are few things that the identity property does not guarantee and we have to take care of those right out of which the first thing is the uniqueness of values right and we'll see in the example below so i'll be taking the same record set that i was that we saw in our previous video okay and here what i'll do is i'll try to insert the same value that is already inserted in our previous run right that is wanted value 3 is already present there and i'll try to insert this wanted 3 value again okay so let's uh, try to just insert here like this right so as you can see here right uh, employee employee id is a uh, entity column and we cannot insert like this right so there is other way to insert explicit values into the employee id column uh, by disabling the entity property of this table 
right how you can disable it you have to set the identity insert to on for this particular table right so i'll be setting the identity insert to on this will disable the identity property of the table and it will allow us to insert the explicit values right so i'll be having employee ID column here and the value here and what i'll do is i'll insert this value and see this one row got affected it means that you know the, ins the identity value was inserted and after that i'll just set to off right so this will enable back the identity property right and we'll see the 103 record got inserted right so although this employee id is a identity column it still allows us to insert the value as 103 having duplicate of 103 value right there is another way to insert duplicates or you know um, non unique values right so what you can do is you can receive the identity value to any of these particular values so that you know whenever the new records are getting inserted they will get inserted after that sequence okay so let's receive it to 102 again back right and now if i'll try to insert this new value right it will get inserted after 102 it will get the id as 103 right see so now there are three duplicates of 103 right and let's again insert abc and you can see there is 104 right okay so this shows you that you know although uh, you are having this column as entity but it will still allow you you know duplicate values right so to make sure to not to have duplicate duplicate values you have to set this column as a primary key or a unique key right okay let's see the second point it's consecutive values within a transaction okay so as you can see the same example you are not getting consecutive values in a same transaction okay so here you see that you know these are random values that got inserted and somewhere you will get similar values that got inserted right so consecutive values are also not guaranteed okay now let's move to the third point that is consecutive values after server restart or other failures so even if you know you make sure that you know these values are not getting inserted like this but still you know there may be server failures or sql server restarts so even if you know these things occur you might get you might not get consecutive values right so let's say the current identity value is 104 or let's say it was some point of time it was 102 and suddenly the server got restarted or if there was a failure right in the server and when the server got restart you might see a gap of identity values so now let's say you the 11th record may be entering would get a value that will have a gap of maybe 50 or maybe 1000 or maybe 10,000 right so consecutive value is still not guaranteed here right uh, fourth point and last point is reuse of values so by reuse of values it means that let's say I have a transaction and it is and I'm inserting these three records right so these three records will get value after 104 so R1 will get 105 R2 will get 106 and R3 will get 107 okay let's go ahead and do that right so as you can see here 5 6 and 1 they got r1 r2 r3 right they got 105 106 107 let's say due to some issue this transaction got rolled back right now all these values are gone right but let's say you again try to reinsert those values right r1 r2 and r3 okay okay now let's see what values they got see they didn't resumed after 105 right so 105 106 107 so r1 r2 r3 in the previous transaction in the previous transaction got 105 106 and 107 but in this transaction they started with 108 109 110 right so the reuse of values is also not guaranteed right so whenever you are dealing with identity property you have to make sure that you know you are dealing with all such kind of things and these things might happen anytime so you have to make sure that you know you are taking care of all these things that you know the identity property does not guarantee okay now let's move to some other things that i want to cover for identity property so there are some more functions that are available you know for identity property like one of them is ident underscore seed this will give the seed value of the particular table column Okay. and you know uh, I'll reiterate that you know in a particular table you can have only one column as the entity property so it's not mandatory to provide the column name if you provide the table name it is enough right so for this particular table if you want to select the seed 
um, this is the function that you can use ident underscore seed and similar for increment value that you want to see it is ident underscore incr for increment right with the table name it will show you as one right uh, there is one more function that you can use with the select statement with the specifically select into statement right select into statement is used to create a new table while selecting records from a particular table without creating the scheme of that particular table right so let's say if i don't use into option okay if i just do a select identity as employee id and with all the other columns that are present in the employee table right let's see if it works so this does not work because the entity function can only be used with select statement that has an into clause right so into clause will create a temporary table with the same structure of the employee table and with the same column signatures right so as you saw that you know this employee table had these random ids now what i think is i want to make sh i want to make a series of employee ids starting with 100 that has an increment of 1 right for all these records so what i will do is i'll insert all these records from employee table into an another table right and what i'll do is i'll use the identity function that has a data type of int seed as 100 and increment as 1 and i'll name this column as employee id I'll not be using the employee ID column from the employee table, right? So let's go ahead and do it. Okay, so it says that 13 records affected. Now let's see the records in the new table. As you can see, the records, those who are inserted in this new table, got the new fresh employee IDs starting from 100 and in sequence that has an increment of 1 value, right? So this is a very handy tool to, you know, whenever you want to whenever you think that you know you want to clean all these employee IDs or you want to rearrange those employee IDs or any particular entity column right in a particular table this is a very handy option okay and the last thing is I want to show you is entity call keyword so this entity call keyword can be a sub substitute for your entity column right that is, that is employee ID so rather than using employee ID what you can do is you can reuse you can use entity call keyword right so let's try to use it what I'm doing is I'm doing select identity call comma all the columns from the new table right so it shows me the employee ID as the entity call so it automatically names it as employee ID rather than identity call okay and all the other columns right including the identity column because I've used select a star it is giving me all these columns from the employee table okay and you can use this identity call keyword with the where clause you can have this with the order by having and uh, the group by clause also right let's check it with the filter clause okay so it beautifully you know uses the identity keyword as a substitute for the employee id okay and let's check with the employee table also okay so it is the same thing and uh, it will give you this particular structure when you will so there might be uh, cases when you are dealing with some dynamic sql and you know some some complex logic then you can use this identity call Okay, and we may see uh, this usage in our in, in our you know forthcoming videos. Okay, so this is all about identity property, and I think I've covered most of these you know hidden features like you know the identity call, the identity function that you can use with select uh, into uh, clause, these identity seed and identity incr functions. And this is all about identity. And uh, thank you very much for watching these videos. And uh, please like the video if you really like it, and please let me know your comments and suggestions. Right, I'll be happy to take them and cover them in my next videos and please subscribe my channel. Thanks a lot.